As a maker of model airplanes, I'm used to working with plastic. The tools I use are simple and easy to use. No complex software. But every now and then, I'll dip my toe into something higher tech. And for this model maker, a laser cutter is as high tech as it comes. Now, I was assured this would be a simple tool to use and that I might even have fun using it. So, can this simple tools guy get a laser set up and running within a day? Actually, yes, and I found a great use for it too. I was approached by Longer and asked to give their 5 watt laser engraver cutter a try. At the time they asked me, my experience with lasers was almost as extensive as my experience with spacewalks or halo jumping. Which is to say, not a lot. And maybe that was the point. After all, if someone who plays primarily with plastic model airplanes can assemble a laser engraver, use it, and keep all his fingers intact, well, then maybe everyone else on the planet can do that too. So I accepted their challenge because I knew what I wanted to try to do with this thing. Model bases. See, I'm a base believer. I think that a model, be it an airplane, tank, or even a car, looks much better when placed on some form of base. Think of it like a frame around a painting. The base completes the look. And when it comes to bases for aircraft models, I think there are six broad categories. The airfield, the flag, the informative base, the scenic base, the mirror, and the plain Jane. Now I've used the mirror, the flag, and the scenic base, and out of the three, I think I like the scenic the most. But now, with the help of this engraver, I'm gonna try my hand at that info base. But first, let's build this thing. The longer engraver was delivered in a well-packaged shipping box. Everything was bagged, everything was padded, everything was protected. Not only did mine have no damage, the parts were pristine. And I want to point something out. As someone who regularly builds things according to instruction sheets, I really appreciated that the hardware for each build step was individually bagged and labeled. There was no guessing. No searching, no lamenting. All of it was there. For each step, I just had to open the numbered baggie and assemble. Even assembling the tracks was straightforward. I use the assembly booklet, which breaks the assembly down into eight steps. Listen, if you've built any IKEA furniture or any scale model, you'll have no issue with these. However, Longer also supplied links to an assembly video and a quick start guide for those that might need a bit more support. Before I knew it, I was reaching for the laser. And you don't get to say that every day. And I was thinking of my first project. And that is when I ran into my only snag. The bolts to secure the laser onto the bracket didn't fit. And that's very strange considering how everything else went together like a watch. But I reached out to the manufacturer and within a couple of days they rushed me a brand new bracket plate and some perfectly fitting bolts. And with that, the assembly was complete. To use the longer engraver, you have to use some form of software to upload, to size, and to position the images or text. And while I was figuring that out, I just wanted to see this thing work. This engraver comes with a mini flash drive that has some designs already included on it. It was very simple to find the file, and before hitting the start button, I learned how to use the frame button. Pressing that will make the laser show you the outline of the design. You can press it as many times as you need to in order to fine tune the location of your material. And once I was happy, it was just a matter of pressing confirm and the machine does the rest. I was very impressed with the detail of this small piece. Next up though, I wanted to try something that was a little more me. This engraver comes with a free to use laser GRBL or laser gerbil software, but I found that Lightburn was easier to use. At least it seemed more intuitive to me and I can hit the ground running. Lightburn is free to try for 30 days and well worth looking at. 
As you can see, I opened up Lightburn, I found the image I wanted to etch, and then I simply had to scale it to the right proportions. The grid on the screen corresponds to real world measurements, so it's pretty simple to figure this out. Now there are a dozen different ways to set up a print. You can easily adjust the laser intensity or the time it takes to etch. And I imagine one can go down several rabbit holes for days trying to figure out the perfect combination for each material. Me, I just went with some suggested settings to get started. Once again, the frame button is key. I had to press this several times in order to get the wood in the right spot. And once I confirmed the placement, it was off to the races. This is not the fastest process, but I think the idea here is not to scorch the material, but to get precise lines. As well, I use the machine out in the garage for fear of smoke in my basement. I was probably worried a little too much about that, considering I'm only etching the wood and not cutting it. After about four minutes, the small logo is done printing, and, well, there was a little discoloration. Thankfully, this is very easy to take care of with some fine grit sandpaper. And there we go. Beauty! I really like how there's a gray scale to the etching. The underwing is a different shade than the sky, for example. That said, it's not quite centered, so I have to work on my material placement. Okay, now for my informative base. The base was a dollar store purchase. I don't know what kind of wood it is, uh, but it was relatively smooth and it was thin and pretty much as small as I could make it for a 48th scale aircraft base. Again, setting up the software is as simple as it gets. I wrote and scaled down the text and saved it as a PNG file. By the way, Lightburn can read pretty much every image file as well as vector files. Once I opened it and scaled it down to the right size, I found some suggested laser settings for script on wood. In this case, it was 80% power with a speed of 3000 millimeters per minute. Once the file was uploaded on the machine and the laser's height adjusted, I hit that frame button several times to get the right spot for the print. This time I was very sure of the placement before I hit commit. And I watched the magic. As you can see, the intensity of the laser was increased and it did leave some surface scorching, but again, not to worry. A little sanding is all it takes to clean it up. Ah, now that is clean. The surface is definitely etched. The writing looks very crisp. Now this is a very simple information label on a model base, but it's just to give you an idea as to what is possible. I'll be adding some matting and some scenery to this base in a future video. If you are interested in buying one of these laser engravers and giving it a try for yourself, I have a link placed below and that'll send you to the online store and you get a nice discount. So there you have it, the longer 5 watt laser etcher and cutter. This one was definitely out of my comfort zone, but the setup was quick. The software was easy to use and the results were great. Until next time everyone, keep building and keep taking risks. Bye for now.